Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to video 700 for those of you who have been counting. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about some of the issues I've been having with my new computer and Rain Serato Scratch Live. Problem is, if you go back and watch my last video, you'll see that this new computer is running Windows 7 Pro 64 bit. And it seems that Rain Serato Scratch Live does not like Windows Pro 64 bit very well. Now, in that video, we've got over a hundred comments and most of those comments were incredibly helpful thank you all for your time and your input I did send that video to Zach at Rain and he, he loves the concept of this community so we're gonna send this video to him as well now some of the comments were very helpful some of them were kind of smug you Mac users out there telling me to buy a Mac well here first of all I appreciate it but we don't have a Mac, we have a PC. And PCs aren't going away, and I'm sure Mac isn't going away either. And if you want me to own a Mac that bad, I urge you to take up a collection and buy me one. And as soon as you've got one purchased, let me know, I'll send you a shipping address. But let me show you how I've been able to, semi-successfully I guess, install Rain Serato Scratch Live onto Windows 7 64 bit. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is change a few things in Windows. Go to Start, Search Programs and Files, and type in UAC, and you get Change User Account Control Settings. Click on that, and I think this is uh, right here at default. Notify me when programs try to make changes to my computer. That's where it is by default. Take it and turn it all the way down to Never Notify and click OK. The next thing you're going to want to do is click Start, right click Computer, Properties, and then go into Advanced System Settings, Hardware, Device Installation Settings, and by default uh, it says here, do you want Windows to download driver software and realistic icons for your devices? By default it said it yes, do this automatically, which is recommended. What you need to do is click no let me choose what to do and also click never install driver software for Windows Update and I also have ticked replace generic device icons with enhanced icons I don't know I just do that's what you have clicked hit save changes and there you have it now make sure that you have deleted any old versions of scratch live off of your machine do a complete fresh install on this if you tried it and you've had no success you're going to want to do a fresh install. I have the Rain Serato Scratch Live SL1 box plugged in. So now we're going to go ahead and run setup. I'm going to want to run it and away it goes. Just like you'd set it up any other time. Accept. Next. Complete install. Yeah, install with desktop icon. Now also note that I do have other USB devices plugged in. Right now I have my keyboard and mouse, they're USB. I don't think they make the old school uh, keyboards and, and mice anymore that you can buy in the store. Probably have one laying around. A lot of people say you can't use any USB stuff. Now look at that. It installed the driver successfully. We're going to click finish. Now before you open Scratch Live, come on up here and right click on it go to properties and click compatibility and make sure this is on run this program in compatibility mode for Windows XP I put it on service pack 2 hit apply and OK now let's open it up it's not very happy with this, as you can see it says hardware disconnected so we'll close that off now what I'm going to do is restart the computer. Okay, I've got the computer restarted now. All I have to do is unplug the SL1 box, plug it back in, make the noise, there it is, and open Scratch Live. And here we have it. It's just a matter of unplugging the box, plugging it back in. 
and we're good to go. So there you have it. Seems to be working just fine. What did I do differently this time that I didn't do before? I installed Scratch Live with the Rain SL1 box plugged in, let it detect the driver itself, and then I went into Scratch Live, Compatibility, XP Service Pack 2, and of course the other settings that I showed you as well. Now I don't know if I'm being redundant on steps with restarts, or I'm being redundant on some of this other stuff that I'm doing on here. All I know is that this combination of things has worked better than anything else that we've tried before. It's not interfering with the sound card otherwise, or Mixmeister, or Virtual DJ, which I do need help with. I need help setting up Virtual DJ with Windows 7 64-bit. But we'll get to that later. We're up and running. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope I've helped somebody out there. Practice and enjoy.